my name is Shira of Queen City Minis. I'm known for making miniatures from everyday items. My videos are pretty to the point, so I don't have a lot of time to talk about myself, so today we can get to know one another. I have also finally created a Patreon. The link is in the description if you'd like to join. While I answer your questions from my YouTube community tab, I'll assemble a kit from Robin Betterly's Miniatures. I'll also answer more personal questions y'all were too polite to ask. My name is Shira, I'm from Massachusetts, and I'm in my mid-30s. I am engaged, as some of you may have surmised from my beautiful ring you can see in my videos. Although the ring looks very much like it's diamonds, it's actually a stone called moissanite. Moissanite is much cheaper than diamonds, and I'm a frugal lady, so I insisted upon moissanite. I will sprinkle more personal information throughout the video, but for now, I will tell you how I got started making miniatures. The first miniature I made was as a child, and I'm not entirely sure what it was, although I do remember making a pretty dope cardboard Barbie dollhouse. When I was growing up, I absolutely loved Barbies and played with Barbies pretty much every day until I was 13 or so. Around the age of 13, I gave my Barbie dream house to a less fortunate cousin of mine, and I have regretted this act of kindness very much so ever since, because I would absolutely adore to have that dollhouse in my life, and I have no clue where it is. So, sad story. Technically, the first miniature I made was when I was a kid, but I've been making miniatures consistently for about three years now. The direction my life has taken now has its roots back in 2020. Back in 2020, I had stopped working full-time in a nursing home and was working from home. A friend of mine was moving back home to Canada and gave me a vintage dollhouse kit. By this point, I had made a few miniatures as an adult for other people's dollhouses, but I had never had one of my own. I had been mostly stuck at home for eight months because of COVID, so I started obsessively assembling the dollhouse. I was pretty much working on the dollhouse like 10 hours a day, and then I decided I needed furniture. I went on an app called OfferUp, and someone was selling 11 large boxes of dollhouse miniatures for $215. By the time I bought the 11 boxes of minis, I had finished building the dollhouse, but I didn't really have the confidence to choose finishes and decorate the interior, so I shifted my obsession to the minis I bought. I started repairing some of the broken miniatures in my boxes, adding custom details, and assembling a couple kits. By about April of 2021, I had been doing something miniature related every single day for six months or so. I was on YouTube every day, binge watching all of Bentley House Mini's videos, and I decided I wanted to start my own channel. I didn't know the first thing about filming or video editing, but I felt so inspired by Bentley House Mini's, I really wanted to start a channel, so about eight months later, I finally did it. My first YouTube video premiered in December 2021, about 13 months after my friend gave me the dollhouse kit. Many of you would like to know what I do for work. I work several part-time jobs, and Pretty much all of them allow me to work from home, which gives me the flexibility to film myself making miniatures and edit the videos. For my first job, I worked at a grocery store. Then I developed a really bad anxiety disorder and was on disability until I was about 25 or so. While I was working on overcoming my anxiety disorder, I got a job at Meals on Wheels, and then I eventually worked as a caregiver. Before COVID, I worked full-time as a caregiver in a nursing home. I still visit one client who I've taken care of for about six years. As far as anxiety goes, I was able to completely overcome my anxiety disorders. I am engaged but not married yet, and I won't be having any kids by choice. My fiancé also doesn't have any kids. We have two cats, a brother and sister. Their names are Banner and Abby. Banner is named after Bruce Banner because I'm a big fan of Marvel. Spider-Man and Daredevil are my favorite superheroes, but Banner didn't seem like a Peter or a Matt Murdock to me, so we went with Banner. What are some mistakes I made as a beginner, and how does that impact what I do today? As a beginner, I was very concerned about making the right decisions. When it came to the miniature dollhouse kit my friend gave me, I had assembled and painted the entire dollhouse. I laid all of the flooring, one strip at a time, and all of the shingles. So I did all of the tedious things people do so they can get to the fun part, and then when it came to the fun part of decorating, I chickened out and sold it. I sold the dollhouse for $25 because I couldn't commit to wallpaper and paint. I have learned at this juncture that this is not that serious. It's just dollhouse stuff, and you can always redo it later or cover it up. 
just have fun and plow ahead. When I make minis today, I just do the damn thing and if some of them look wonky or goofy, I hide them in the back and put the better accessories up front. I have a very casual, laid-back approach to making minis, and part of that is not liking to measure things. When it comes to making 112 scale items, I'm able to just eyeball it and they turn out to be the right size. If I'm making minis in a scale I'm not familiar with, I'm more likely to measure. I've never made a doll, although I've made a few animals. I feel like it's something I could tackle after watching Bentley House Minis, Little Gretchen's Workshop, and Tiny Keyhole Minis make dolls, so I will give it a shot in 2024. My favorite project I've ever made has not been released yet as of now. It's my favorite project because I'm really relieved to be finished and I absolutely love how it turned out. A project I haven't had the confidence to tackle would be the Gryffindor Common Room, which I just recently started. I had been teasing about starting that project ever since I started my channel, but I had never even created a room box yet or done a dollhouse, and once I started making my own room boxes, I realized what a huge undertaking that would be, so I delayed it. Sometimes I listen to music while I work, and that would most likely be the Lumineers. For the most part, I listen to YouTube because you can't really watch very well, and I also listen to some trash TV like 90 Day Fiancé. My main thing is I make dollhouse miniatures using everyday items and simple materials, but I actually do own a 3D printer. I'm pretty sure I've owned it the entire time I've had my channel. I haven't used it in at least a year because I've been so busy with my channel and I'm really impatient with technology. So I really don't feel like designing files or even printing and cleaning files. For me, it's just easier and faster to make things by hand. I know technology and miniatures can get a lot of hate, but I'm actually for it. I think some projects are so tedious that having to do it all by hand would really sap your creative energy, especially things like cutting out windows or making the same item over and over. I also really like how laser cutters and 3D printers make kits available for people because kits are a great way to break into making miniatures. My fiance's best friend has a Glowforge laser cutter, which is the best laser cutter you can get so I would like to do something on that in 2024. I'm not sure when, but I will be moving. It'll be when I find a house. But I will definitely do a craft room tour once I'm set up in my new house, because right now my craft room is a bit chaotic. Actually, it's always been chaotic. It's not just a right now thing, but I will be organized and set up when I move. My workspace is a pretty good size because I have an entire bedroom to work in. Since we don't have any kids, we have spare bedrooms. My most used tools would be my X-Acto knife, my heat gun for drying things and curing clay because I'm very impatient, and my miter shears. I would not be able to sustain myself on my current YouTube income, but I am doing a lot better than I was expecting. So I'm a little less than two years into my channel and I have about 40,000 subscribers. I'm right around making $12.50 a month or so. So a couple months ago, I made $1,000 and then $1,250 and then $1,350, so it's going up every month. My first month, I only made $17. If any of you have project ideas or suggestions, I'm very open to hearing them. Some other passions in life, I actually do aerial silks and lira, so it's like circus type stuff. I used to bake and paint, but as soon as I started doing miniatures, I stopped doing both of those things. Really, I was just painting and baking to have a creative outlet, but I wasn't really passionate about it because I haven't looked back. If you can hear my cat, he is scratching his scratcher. This is part of the reason I hate voiceover, because my cats act loud and obnoxious during voiceover, and also I live on a very loud street, so I have to redo clips a lot whenever there's a car going by or a cat is acting a holy. Miniatures I don't really enjoy making would be starting the project, like deciding how big a space will be or what shape it'll be, so that is my least favorite part, and the details are my favorite. I recently started the Gryffindor Common Room project, and I am so grateful to have started with a Bentley House Minis kit. I think the decision paralysis would have been enormous if I had to start entirely from scratch. Mostly because I'm really impatient and don't like planning or measuring, which are two things you need to do when you're building a dollhouse. I think my favorite scale to work in so far has been half scale, which are the items I made for Bentley House minis. 
They were easier to make than quarter scale because you have a bit more space to work with, but they're not as big as 112 scale, so you don't need as much detail. Although I do love the details, I'm actually an impatient person, which I think has helped in my miniature crafting because it allows me to innovate and make things easier and faster. Currently, I store my work in a box, which is pretty sad, but when I move, I will do something a little more pleasing to the eye and show you. The only miniature I'm actually displaying is the cardboard room box I made, which is hanging in my kitchen. And I also have my Christmas lantern sitting on a bench. And honestly, I left it out for the entire year and now the season is upon us again, so it's appropriate now. I'd say the unsung hero of my miniature crafting has got to be wood glue. I first saw Aira from Bentley House Minis use wood glue in her abandoned coffee shop diorama to smooth out the sink and I have been addicted ever since. I use wood glue on pretty much every miniature I want to look like metal, plastic, or ceramic. I tend to make miniatures in the afternoon, but I've pretty much been working on my channel or making miniatures every single day for at least three years, including on the weekends. My advice for someone who's just starting out in the hobby would probably be to either customize some furniture, repair some furniture, do a kit, or make a very simple accessory like my miniature paper mugs. The paper mugs are really easy to make and very easy to customize. You could also start out by making a miniature book. There are hundreds of tutorials and you can make it as detailed or as simple as you'd like. Mainly, you just don't expect the first thing you make to be something museum worthy because just like anything else, you get better over time. I just realized the irony in what I just said because Aira from Bentley House Minis literally started out by making her Adam's Family dollhouse and it is in a museum. But for the rest of us mere mortals, just give yourself a break and don't expect perfection. I haven't been selling the things I make, but I am definitely open to doing so in the future because I'm starting to accumulate a lot of stuff. I have received a lot of comments from people saying they find my voice relaxing, which is nice to hear. My voiceover voice is probably different from my speaking voice because I'm being more deliberate in what I'm saying, so I'm speaking a bit more slowly than I normally do and probably more softly. Here are three random facts about me. I don't have any tattoos because I can't commit to anything. I was voted friendliest for the 8th grade yearbook. I can't watch horror movies and had a nightmare after watching a Pixar movie. As for my Patreon, there is one $3 a month tier, but I'll be posting plenty of free content anyone can see. I'd like to use my Patreon to get to know my viewers better, tell you more about myself, and show you behind the scenes things, and maybe things that aren't miniature related at all, like perhaps my aerial hobby or home projects. For the kit, I added some wood glue under the pin so it wouldn't fall out. I took a little shortcut and painted all of the wood white and added some subtle color using chalk pastels. Thank you for your questions and thank you for watching.